read a humorous story some time ago about a couple who were vacationing in Yosemite Park. The wife expressed her concern about camping because of bears in the park and said she would feel more comfortable if she and her husband stayed in a motel. The husband, however, said that he would like to camp, but to calm his wife's concerns, they would talk to the park ranger to see what the likelihood of a bear encounter would be. So the ranger told them, well, we haven't seen any grizzlies in this area so far this year, or black bears for that matter. The wife shrieked with fear and said, you mean there are two types of bears out here? How can you tell the difference? Which one is more dangerous? The ranger replied, well, that's easy. See, if the bear chases you up the tree and it comes up after you, it's a black bear. But if the bear shakes the tree until you fall out, it's a grizzly. Well, needless to say, the wife decided that the motel room would work quite nicely for her. And the husband decided that would work well for him too. Friends, I think it would be wise for us to take a moment and be honest about our battle with fear today. It hits all of us at some point in time in our lives, and especially right now in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. Yes, fear is quite debilitating. It's an emotion that can wreak havoc on life as we know it. Fear keeps us from living free, effectively and joyfully. It keeps us on the run when our real need many times is peace. There's a number of things that people fear. Obviously right now, the fear of disease and death, fear of failure, fear of loss, fear of others, fear of self and the fear of what today and tomorrow holds. But friends, as long as we are in this world, there will be things to fear, for that is a part of the human condition. But the question is, how can I temper my fears and strive to settle in to a more manageable place, a healthy place in my heart and in my mind? There's a wonderful event from my faith tradition about a group of followers who were locked behind closed doors out of fear from certain enemies. Then something suddenly happened for them. Their leader, the master, appears in the midst of them and says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. It was a greeting that conveyed a spiritual, mental, and emotional strength that they needed at that time. A number of years ago, a major American magazine published the results of a most fascinating survey. The editors had asked 16 prominent Americans what they did in order to find peace of mind in the midst of a stressful world. And some of the responses were quite revealing. Noted author James Michener reported that he found peace of mind by walking his two dogs along deserted country roads, old streams and fields that had not been plowed for half a century. Former Arizona Senator Barry Goldwater said that he found peace of mind in his hobbies of boating, photography, and flying. He especially found peace of mind by taking reflective walks in the Grand Canyon. Walter Cronkite, the former CBS anchorman, said he preferred solitude, usually by going to sea in a small boat. And toward the end of World War II, Harry S. Truman, then president, was asked how he was able to keep his cool under the pressures of his office. He said that he had a foxhole in his mind and that just as in combat, the infantryman could scramble into his foxhole to take cover. He relied on a mental foxhole in times of fear and stress. Friends, let me encourage you this day as you face your fears, keep fighting life through by implementing whatever healthy and life-giving means are available to you in pursuing the peace you need in the midst of these challenging times. And may you too know, in your own way, the reality of spiritual, mental, and emotional strength. Peace be with you.